13 Facts About Ireland and St. Patrick's Day In the rusty iron chains, we sighed for our weans, our good women we left there in sorrow. As the mainsails unfurled, our curses were hurled at the English and the thoughts of tomorrow. That's from Back Home in Derry, an old Irish drinking song we thought you'd need for St. Patrick's Day. While we're at it, why don't we look at a couple more facts about the people from the Emerald Isle? About the great green fields of the glorious English-speaking land known as Ireland. But first, before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more daily tips like this and turn on notifications so you never miss our new videos. Ah, there's just such a beauty and majesty that comes from the Emerald Isle. Named that because of its majestic green fields and constant rain that keep the grass lush and brilliant. Every year we come across St. Patrick's Day and use it as an excuse to, uh, celebrate the Irish people and their country. Usually, it involves drinking a lot of whiskey and sputtering out, oh Danny boy. But this year, why don't we go over some facts about the Emerald Isle so that this holiday, you can at least sputter out something a little bit different. Number one, the basics. All right, so let's talk about the gorgeous green beauty that is the country of Ireland. The GDP of Ireland is $217.3 billion, while its per capita GDP is 47,478. They're a democratic nation, and it's been that way since 1937. The average family size in Ireland is four, two kids with two adults. Their national animal is either the Irish hare or the red deer, they haven't decided. And their patron saint is none other than St. Patrick, duh. Number two, English and. As you're probably aware, the people of the Great Green Emerald Isle speak some sort of variation on the English language. But did you know that they actually speak another, slightly more dead language as well? Here's a fact that'll blow your mind. Irish school children are still taught Irish, which is a Gaelic language. Here's some for reference. Please pardon the terrible pronunciation. Dia do it. Falete Romia Machinal. Sounds cool, huh? Number three, exports. So, what do the Irish give the world besides fun drinking songs, Colin Farrell, and beautiful pictures of green fields? According to Nation Facts, the Emerald Isle exports food products such as potatoes, lamb, and beef. They also export a large amount of zinc, lead, machinery, and pharmaceuticals. And who do they sell this stuff to? Well, the US takes about 20% of Ireland's exports. Let's see, potatoes, hamburgers, drugs, thanks Ireland. Number four, imports. So, what do they take from the world? Besides a lot of crap from the English, well, Nation Facts once again delivers that answer. Their imports include oil, aircraft parts, vehicles, and petroleum gases. And who do they take this crap from? None other than the English, of course. The English account for about 38% of the country's imports. Speaking of the English. Number five a nation divided. Here's a sad fact about the Irish people. The country is divided into two. The North, which is still governed by none other than the English or the United Kingdom, just in case you were getting confused, and the rest, who are an independent nation. The two sides have been at each other's throats since the early 1900s, and most notably during a time called the Troubles in the 90s, which featured a group you may know, the official Irish Republic Army, or the official IRA for short. Will Ireland ever be whole again? Only time will tell. Number six, castles. Speaking of wars and bloodshed, the country of Ireland is covered in castles. This is because of the bloody history of the Emerald Isle. So ancient Irish people would often need protection from the battles and fighting. This is why today Ireland is spotted with castles, and most of them can even be visited today by tourists. 
Number seven, official color. Quick, what's the official color of Ireland? Green? Wrong. Apparently, it's none other than St. Patrick's Blue, a color that appears on the historic coat of arms of Ireland. The color's association with St. Patrick dates from the 1780s when it was adopted as the color of the Anglo-Irish Order of St. Patrick. These days, green is most often associated with Ireland, and the average Irish person will probably say green is their official color. But the Order of St. Patrick doesn't lie. Number eight, St. Patrick. Show of hands, who knows who St. Patrick is? Who knows what he did? Well, he was the fifth century bishop who came to be known as the Apostle of Ireland. There are many legends about St. Patrick, but the one most people seem to know about him is the one about the snakes. There's a lack of snakes in Ireland, and that is usually attributed to their patron saint. As the story goes, St. Patrick was attempting a 40-day fast on top of a hill when he was attacked by snakes. St. Patrick was obviously pretty annoyed by this, so he chased the snakes into the sea, banishing them from Ireland and ensuring that nobody would be faced with a phobia on the Emerald Isle ever again. Some say the snakes were a metaphor for druids, who St. Patrick would have driven out in order to make way for Christianity, but that makes the legend much less fun, now doesn't it? Number nine, St. Patrick's Day. Speaking of good old St. Patty, we should talk a little bit about the day they named after him because it's kind of a big deal in Ireland. First off, if you're born on this day in Ireland, you're considered to be one lucky feller. During this day of grand celebration, the Irish people go all out indulging in traditional Irish foods like beer, pink bacon, and savory chicken. Especially Guinness beer, which is very popular and, in fact, originated on the Emerald Isle. Number 10. Leprechauns and Fairies What's more Irish than a leprechaun? These little men who, according to the Irish, sit on your shoulder and bury gold, are as Irish as Guinness and the color, St. Patrick's Blue. Legend has it that these little guys have buried all sorts of pots of gold all around the Emerald Isle, and all it takes is an Irishman with a shovel and a lot of gusto to dig them up. We're not sure where the end of the rainbow came from, but what the heck? Speaking of legends, there's actually a good chunk of Irish population that believes in fairies. In Irish culture, fairies have magical powers and bring happiness to families. Number 11 birthdays, funerals, and weddings. Okay, a lot to unpack here about the Irish celebrations, but let's start with some of the weird birthday traditions. On children's birthdays, the family will often bump the child's head against the cake, once for every year that they were born. It's considered pretty good luck to do this. As for weddings, they're actually pretty similar to the ones that we have in North America. People travel far and wide to attend. The bride wears white to signify her purity the only difference, really, is that the groom wears a kilt. That's the same color as the family crest. Finally, funerals. While they are a sad occasion, they're not usually a sad event. Family members of the deceased will take the time to speak well and share fond memories of the dead person, then partake in some food and drink. Fun fact, churches tried to ban alcohol at weddings and funerals years ago but failed really hard in doing so. Those Irish sure love their booze. Number 12, sports. The Irish take their sports very seriously. Like many other European countries, the Irish people love soccer or football if you speak the Queen's English. However, they also really like some more lesser known sports. These include hurling, kamaji, and handball. Hurling is essentially a combination of lacrosse and baseball, but even that doesn't do it justice. It's a 4,000-year-old Irish sport that is often called the fastest game on grass. Handball, we're sure you've played in the gym class, so we don't have to go too much into detail about that. You just throw a ball into a net. And finally, Kamaji is just the female version of hurling, with some slight differences. 
we've got to wonder if the Irish would be any good at lacrosse, considering their illustrious hurling history, or maybe even baseball. Number 13, Gender Equality. You can count in the Emerald Isle, in for one of the most equal places on planet Earth. Showcased by the fact that they've had two female presidents, they were called Mary Robinson and Mary McAleese. And they were the seventh and eighth presidents of Ireland, back-to-back -back women. As they say in the Irish, I'm hot, Kaylin. That was our attempt at saying girl power, Irish speakers, so don't hate on us too hard. We really are trying. <laughs> That's it. What did you think, Irish people? Did we represent your country well, or did we miss the most fun facts about your beautiful nation? Either way, let us know in the comments what we did right or wrong, and everyone have a safe and fun St. Patrick's Day. Enjoyed this video? Hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.